Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a textured image brush from a picture. Simple and in my usual style. This is a follow-up to the video, Your Art, Your Brushes. If you're interested, feel free to check it out on my channel. This brushes are used for drawing painting repetitive patterns and realistic textures by turning images into brushes. If you're really interested in learning more about that with all the details, just search for Affinity Designer Brushes. I use this image because it's simple and easy. Normally, I don't draw backgrounds much in my videos. I also reused some brushes I made from previous videos. Drawing backgrounds takes time, so sometimes we need to find ways to work faster. I'm more comfortable drawing in vector because I can easily adjust colors and shapes while working. I know that drawing in pixel, raster, mode is also simple and can achieve similar results too. Alright, let's draw a cherry blossom after we've sketched out a rough background. I'm still working in designer persona as usual. You can also work in pixel persona, or you can cut out a cherry blossom from a photo and use it, both work just fine. Use the method of creating brushes by cutting out from various photos. Some people say vector lines look too sharp, so adding a bit of Gaussian blur can help soften them. We want it to look realistic, but I'll give it a bit of a graphic style. This is one example. A textured image brush in Affinity Designer uses an image or texture as the stroke, allowing you to create detailed and natural-looking effects. Honestly, I don't use it that often, but you might find it really useful. Okay. Once you've finished drawing, try arranging the cherry blossoms in different position and sizes however you like. We don't really know how it will look when applied, so we need to test it first. Since both texture intensity brushes and textured image brushes can't be expanded into shapes, we need to rasterize them to add details, make adjustments, and erase parts. When you're done, go to File Export to PNG, Select Area Selection only, and make sure the background is transparent. Then, click Export. Next, go to the Brushes panel. Click Add Texture Image Brush. Just double-click the brush and set it to repeat if needed. This brush can be applied to curves created with the pen tool and pencil tool. Using texture brushes in designer persona stretches them along the curve, so be careful not to distort the shape of the texture too much. A textured image brush works by stretching or repeating an image along the brush path. When you change the color, it only affects the brush's tint or overlay, 
not the original texture colors. If the brush image is in full color, the color change may not work as expected, but if it's grayscale, the tint will apply more accurately. If you change the color, try turning off the fill or setting it to none, since a textured image brush uses the brush's own texture rather than the fill color. After this, you can use the same technique to draw backgrounds more easily. You could even use it for things like necklaces, ropes, or text running along a path with realistic textures. Try it out and see what you can create. After you finish painting in vector mode, refine the details in Pixel Persona by adding extra texture and shading. There's also a solid brush, which I haven't mentioned. This type of brush can be expanded into a shape, working similarly to the regular strokes we already use. You can explore it more on your own. It's not that hard. That's all for this video. Follow along with my process, it's pretty fun, and maybe you'll come up with even better ideas than me. I didn't spend much time drawing this one, try following along. It's not super detailed, but I hope you like it. I focused more on how to create a textured image brush, and it works really well for casual drawing. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you try this technique, I'd love to hear how it goes. See you in the next one. And thanks for watching.